Hi, and welcome to Baking for Paws. I'm your host, Jessica Kale, and this is a weekly web series created by me for you to help you learn how to make gourmet treats for your four-legged friends. Today's recipe is a black and white cookie. This treat is great for any occasion, but especially if you're ushering in the new year on the right paw. If you're staying at home and enjoying the festivities, consider going black tie to transform the evening into a memorable, formal affair. Pets look great with their tuxes and tails on too, and when they greet your guests at the door, looking spiffy with a black bow tie or a tiara on, everyone's gonna know that there's a party going on, but remember to watch your guests so they don't go for these scrumptious looking black and white cookies. They'll be tempted, but we need to remind them that these are for our four-legged friends. Today's recipe, you'll need a few ingredients. It's a two-part recipe, meaning that there's a dough and a topping. So for the dough today, you will need one cup oat flour, one half cup brown rice flour, one cup all natural, unsweetened, unsalted peanut butter, one tablespoon honey, one egg, and half a cup water. That will be for the dough part. Now for the topping, you'll need eight ounces Caribou chips. Please remember not to substitute these with chocolate chips as chocolate chips are not safe for your pet. Then you'll also need eight ounces white chocolate chips. Now these are safe for your pets, but only the white chocolate chips. The first thing you're gonna wanna do before we start making the dough is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. The next step will to be combined all the dough ingredients. So you're gonna wanna combine the one cup oat flour, the one cup and one fourth cup brown rice flour, a half a cup peanut butter, one tablespoon honey, one half cup water, and one egg. I use all natural eggs, but you can use whatever you prefer. Once all that is in the mixing bowl, you're then gonna wanna just mix it together till it creates a dough-like consistency. Okay, so once the dough is completely mixed, you're gonna wanna go ahead and take a little bit of flour and lightly flour your board so that way the dough doesn't stick to it, as well as your rolling pin. So the next step is, is that you'll take your dough and you'll roll it out to about a quarter inch thickness. And then you'll take either a cookie cutter or glass, or you can shape your treats by hand, whatever you prefer. Today, I'm going to use a paw print and a bone cookie cutter to cut out our shapes. So, after you've cut your cookie out, you'll place it on an ungreased pan and then place them in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Now, again, we do not know what kind of animal you are serving, so if you need to, refer back to episode one for more details on baking times. Okay, once your cookies come out of the oven, make sure that they are completely cooled before doing the topping. The first part of the topping is you're gonna wanna go ahead and get a double boiler, or if you don't have a double boiler like myself, you can use a pot with water and then a ceramic bowl. But just please remember to be a little careful because this tends to get a little hot. You're gonna go ahead and put the white chocolate chips into the bowl and let them melt until they get really melted. Once they start to melt, that means they're hot and warm enough that you can start dipping your cookies. I've already dipped about half of the cookies that we're going to do, 
uh, just because it's very, it can be time consuming if you, we were to wait and do each individual cookie. So what you do is you wanna make sure that this is pretty runny. Once it's runny, you take the bowl out of the water because if it's on the water for too long, just like any other chocolate, if you do it in the microwave or even on the stove, it can burn. So you wanna make sure that it's liquidity enough but not too hot that it's burning. So you take a cookie and you dip it face down into the white chocolate chips. Once that's done, you take it off and you set it on a cooling rack. At this point, you're going to have to let the chocolate chip frosting, in a sense, cool all the way until it's completely cool before we go ahead and do the chocolate part. And the reason for that is if you were to do them back to back and the icing wasn't cooled, the chocolates would run and mix into each other and it wouldn't look as pretty as we want them to. So that's the first step to the frosting. And now we'll move on, once these are completely cool, to doing the chocolate part. Okay, now that the white chocolate chip has cooled, you'll repeat the process as so the double boiler with the carbo chips and heat them up till they're melty. Then once they're melty, you'll take your cookie and dip half of the cookie in the carbo chip and then you'll let them cool and you have your black and white cookies. Remember that these treats can be stored up to one week in the refrigerator and should be thrown out after that because they can get moldy. Um, keep them in a plastic bag. You can also keep them in the freezer if they made a lot and take them out when you need to give your pet a treat. Other than that, we'll continue on in just one second. Today's guests are my babies, Roxy, Lily, and Maddie. They're here today to not only ensure that these treats look good, but that they taste good as well. So let's put them to the test. Are you ready, girls? Would you like a treat? Let's see. Sit, Roxy, Lily, and Maddie. <laughs> Looks like they like them. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Baking for Paws. If you or your pet would like to be featured on an upcoming episode, please email me at bakingforpaws at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe below. Please remember to spay and neuter your pets. I hope you'll check us out on next week's episode. But until then, keep on baking for your furry friends.